Hey YouTubers, this is Jacques Gaines, and today I'm going to finally review Luminar 4. I've been working with the software for about a month now, so I'm gonna tell you the pros and cons of Luminar 4. Hey people out there in YouTube land, photographers and hobbyists, I really do want to go through Luminar and tell you what I think about the software. So without further ado, I'm just going to get into it. But I have to say that uh, I am a Luminar partner and I just wanted to throw that out there so you know. I do offer you guys discount codes and a link and I, when they sell software, I get some money. But I still find it important to be honest and tell you what I really do think of the software. It's a positive review, it's very positive, but you know, there are some cons, so stay tuned and watch and see what happens. So first of all, let's start off with the pros. Okay, so the first thing I wanna tell you guys is that with Luminar 4, as compared to other Luminars, 2008 and Luminar 3, uh, the interface is definitely more streamlined. You will notice that the, that there is less when you look at the software. It is really quite sharp and it is as in-depth. Some people thought layers were lost. They still are right here. It just takes a bit of getting used to. Once you do learn it, you're very happy with the new interface. So I just wanted to say that the new interface is more streamlined and a lot better. It is sharp. It's really nice. Uh, another pro that I put here was that uh, there are quick lever-like edits and surprisingly in-depth customization. Luminar for me has become one of my go-to plugins when I'm working in Photoshop, and I'll talk about that later. But what I really do like about this software is when you do use some of the editing tools, it is a one lever process. And one of the big examples of that is AI Skin Enhancer. It uses artificial intelligence so in this case if i do a before and after with the lever right here and just to show you now this is a sort of an a b look at what it does to the image what i really find nice is that how you affect the slider here will affect the naturalness of your edit so you can if you really do are a person who likes to have natural skin and let leave the blemishes there you can so the slider not only will give you something great at 100 percent but when you put it halfway down, it'll do an edit as if you were someone who didn't want as much of that thing. And it's not going to fade out the effect. Therefore, there's something for all, even in those one slider edits. Now, I also mentioned that the one slider edits, let me see what I, I think I put surprisingly, yes, surprisingly in-depth customization. So a lot of these levers, when you go into high key and stuff like that, there's always a, an option here for advanced settings. And the advanced settings they offer always make sense. They always are something where you go, hmm, that's something I would like to actually change later on. So you have the ability to just push up a lever and get your one-stop solution, but you also have the ability to start going in depth. To what extent? It's not for everybody. Maybe you might wanna go even more in depth. I think one of those die hard Photoshop editors might not be interested in this software, but you know, I think it is surprisingly in depth. Uh, next thing I also wanted to say, uh, and I did basically mention it before, is that the AI is doing what most pros would do to make an image look great. So the results, I'm telling you guys, it's surprising. When you go to some softwares, the results on a one lever push-up can be quite tacky. And I think that's because they base their editing results on what is most popular and what what is most popular is not always the most tasteful now the other thing i also wanted to mention i i put it in the pros there is that the software can be used as a standalone but what is really nice is that it can also be used as a plugin now if you are someone who works in photoshop you can use luminar as a plugin it is my preferred way of working is working in photoshop and then using luminar as a plugin 
So therefore, I just wanted to mention that it's not only a standalone, it's an excellent plugin and not only for Photoshop. Now, there are some really new features in Luminar 4 that you don't have in 3 and they are really, really cool. Like some of the stuff like Sky Replace is quite cool. I mean, again, that's another one you have to go at it easy. You got to know what you're doing and you have to have a bit of taste because you can make something that looks pretty bad, but it does do a great job. Erase is amazing. It's just amazing how you can just draw a certain aspect of the photo and say you don't want that in the photo and poof it just disappears so some of the new features are really good and really useful and the last big pro i think on this software is the price it, it doesn't cost that much so now i want to go into some of the i guess bad points of the software some of the cons and I think you should be wary and definitely listen to this part because there are certain parts of these cons where if one of the cons bothers you, you shouldn't get the software. It's just that plain and simple. So let's go through them real uh, quick. So really quickly, I'm gonna get into some of the cons of the software. So let's look at them now. Okay, so the first one is AI seems to eat up processing power. One feels a delay when working in the software. Okay, and RAWs don't really like Luminar too much. It's just, uh, it's just a thing. It's just a thing with the software. Now, the capacity of this software to generate previews, to actually show you an edit and preview something, it just has a hard time doing it. It puts a load on the processor and there is a delay. Now, Luminar 4 is definitely a step up from Luminar 3. It doesn't eat up as much processing power, but it still eats up quite a bit when it's doing what it has to do. I think it has a lot to do with the AI and the fact that it is, it is analyzing each photo and trying to come up with... Uh, a solution for that photo and probably when each photo when you change see this delay see the blur you see that blur and i guess it loads in all the edits but it takes quite a while so i think anyone when you're working in the software you have to expect to be a tiny bit patient not as much as before because you you it does process very well but it just takes a tiny bit more time than if you're working in a software like photoshop that's been around quite a while now let's go into uh Library functions, I think most photo editing softwares out there, all library functions aren't that great. Some of the more elaborate ones where it's, you know, things are great as Capture One and Lightroom. Uh, I think every single software company, especially the smaller ones, should be investing more time in finding a way to classify and rank photos. Luminar has not done that for that for your library functions when you start going into multiple photos and you want to rank the interface isn't great uh, uh, when you load your photos it takes a while when you load a folder of photos it's crazy how long it can take it can take a long time and I personally have made the choice just to not use Luminar when it comes to library functions so I work with bridge load in photoshop edit in photoshop and then export to luminar when i want to bring in one of those quick fix effects okay so i just wanted you guys to know that i have seen uh, anthropics i've checked out some of their softwares they have a uh, software called portrait pro 19 and um, the only problem with that is i'm not comparing apples to oranges because to get all the functions that you have in luminar you have to buy about three i think it's three softwares in anthropics and you can also buy it in a bundle which is about 300 and some bucks and luminar is about 100 100 and some bucks or something like that so i'm not comparing apples to oranges but some of the really cool features for portraits and some of the ai in anthropics is great i think luminar should check out and see what they are doing as well and try to bring some of that stuff in it just depends uh because anthropics also has their problem the fact that uh, they offer you quick fix solutions, but for a market that is not necessarily ready to pay 300 and some bucks to get those quick fix solutions. And that's what I think Luminar really found a little niche there is that they give you quick fix solutions that are not as in depth as Anthropics, but they give you a price where it's not as big of a sacrifice. 
So I would like to see some of those Anthropics features brought into Luminar 4. I talked to the people at Luminar and they do not at this point in time have a mobile version of Luminar 4. Now this is a con, but it's actually a con because it, there are so many pros to the actual software. The software is so great and so good at doing what it does that I really think it is crazy that right now they don't have a mobile version where you can actually, whenever you take a photo, you go up there and uh, you shoot a shot, you, you shoot with your camera, with your cell phone. Uh, it would be really fun to shoot that thing into Luminar, a mobile version of Luminar, and come out with quick edits and be able to post that stuff on Instagram and social media. So I think it would be a real, real bonus for Luminar to come out with a mobile version quick because... Um, uh, Adobe has woken up and their Lightroom and Photoshop mobile versions kick ass. They're really good. So Luminar, I think, could become a huge competitor if they brought some of these great AI features into a mobile version software of uh, Luminar. If you're an in-depth Instagrammer, you're somebody who wants to do Instagram, but you want your images to look great on your profile, but you don't want to spend tons of time um, working and editing your photos, you will get that certain edge that you don't get with some of those little mobile softwares you have on a cell phone. And uh, this goes back to what I just said before that I think it would be great if they had a mobile version of this uh, software. Another one is serious photography hobbyists that don't want to get in too deep into Photoshop like editing. This is a great software because again, you just pull up a couple sliders and you can have some instant gratification and some nice shots. And anybody needing quick, great results, no matter what your workflow is, I think this is a software where you can get some quick, great results fast. So if you have a hundred bucks in your arsenal, I think there's a lot of people out there that would benefit from buying the software. Uh, if you are someone who wants to use this professionally, I would stick to Photoshop or Lightroom. So that is my two cents on this software. I think this video is a lot longer than I thought it would be, but I really thought it good to mention these things and make sure that you guys know what's going on if you're going to pick a software like Luminar. Uh, you guys, thank you very much for watching. And you guys, if you have any comments, anything would you want to talk about, leave comments below. I love talking to you people. Like, share, subscribe, and don't forget everybody, keep on making something from nothing.